Hey, do you remember your elementary school geography lessons? Yeah, me neither. However, what if I told you that one of the very first things we learned about the world is wrong? The world map, as we know it and often see depicted, is actually incorrect. It makes some countries appear huge, while others seem tiny. And it's been deceiving our eyes for nearly 500 years. And Africa now wants to change that. Think back to your classroom wall. Maybe you recall a giant blue pull-down map hanging above the chalkboard. Perhaps you played Name a Country while the professor was pointing at it. That map is based on the so-called Mercator projection, the classic chart everyone knows. You see, back in 1569, I wasn't around then, but a clever guy named Gerardus Mercator thought of this chart. Not for classrooms, but for sailors. It became a standard for navigation. The oceans were already busy in the 1500s, and if you were trying to sail from Portugal to India to import spices like black pepper or cinnamon and get rich, you had no better options than this projection. But how is it wrong? Earth is round. Flattening it is like peeling an orange and trying to squish it flat. It can't be done. It rips and deforms. Normally, when you draw a straight line on a globe, it curves all over the place once you flatten it. That's confusing when you're trying to steer a ship with just a compass. Well, Mercator basically stretched the top and bottom of the map, making the polar regions huge. Why? Well, basically it makes a compass bearing look like a straight line. A sailor could just draw a straight line on the map to their destination and follow it across the ocean. However, because of this distortion, Africa looked about the same size as Greenland, which is actually 14 times smaller. Europe looked nearly as big as Africa, when in reality, Africa is about three times mm -hmm. its size. In fact, Africa is so massive that you could fit the United States, China, and India inside it and still have room to spare. Ooh, would the UK fit? Hmm. As maps got printed in books and atlases, Mercator stuck around because it was already popular. It looked neat and rectangular, so it fit nicely on walls and pages. It basically became the truth. This is why many scholars argue that this geographical deception changed how generations of people saw importance and power. Remember, this was back when colonization was a big deal, and European powers were busy claiming trade routes and land. Seeing Europe take up so much space on the map only fueled the idea that they were in charge. Eventually, some geographers and activists began asking, why are we still using a 500-year-old sailor's tool to teach kids what the world looks like? In fact, over the centuries, cartographers kept trying to fix the problem. But the results were mixed. There was the Robinson projection in the 1960s. It was designed as a compromise map. It didn't nail down size or shape perfectly, rather aimed to look good overall. And it worked! National Geographic used it for years. Despite not having a single feature that was completely accurate, Africa seemed closer to its actual size, but the pole still looked stretched out, and the areas around the equator seemed a bit squished. Uh oh! Another notable one is the Gall Peters projection from the 1970s. It was one of the first maps to really show countries in their correct sizes. It fixed Africa, but everything else looked kind of goofy. Sort of like someone printed the Mercator chart on a piece of cloth and then stretched it. Yet another major alternative is the Equal Earth Projection from 2018. The goal of this one was to finally make everything accurate without looking weird. On the Equal Earth map, Africa looks huge, South America is nicely spread out, and Europe takes up only the small area it actually covers. The shapes may look a bit curvy, and the edges aren't perfectly aligned. But that seems to be the price to pay. This one might be the one, since recently, Africa said, hey, enough's enough, let's finally use a map that shows how huge we really are. Now again, it's not just Africa. We can mention Scandinavia. On most maps, it stretches tall and slim, making it look almost as big as India. But that's just the Mercator illusion. In reality, India is a giant, about three times larger than all the Scandinavian countries combined. So while the map makes them look like equals, on the ground, India got this one. Now, before you throw away your old wall map, there's one last twist. Every flat map lies. Overall, there are hundreds of different projections, each one solving one problem while creating another. Some keep directions accurate, some keep areas fair, and some just aim to look nice. 
Map makers fight over this stuff like gamers fight about which Mario game is the best. Since I'm not a sailor, I vote for the prettiest one. Now, the only map that tells the whole truth is the globe. That's why classroom globes are tilted at about 23.5 degrees to match Earth's actual tilt. It's the closest you'll ever get to seeing the real thing. But let's be honest, nobody's carrying a basketball-sized Earth in their backpack. That's why we keep falling back on flat maps. They're easy to carry and print, and they make sense to our eyes. Even Google Maps relies on Mercator for street-level navigation because it keeps directions simple. Anyway, if you want to see Earth without all the stretching, that's what Google Earth is for. You can spin it, zoom in, zoom out. That's the planet in its true shape, recreated digitally. However, maps just don't play tricks with size and position. They can also mess with distance. On a Mercator map, if you look at New York and London, the straight line between them seems like the shortest route. But the real shortest path, called the Great Circle Route, actually curves north over Greenland. That's why transatlantic flights arc up toward the Arctic instead of flying straight across the page. Also, it's like the whole world can't even agree on what a world map should look like. In the West, we're used to seeing the Americas on the left and Asia on the right. There's a joke that, in Australia, you might come across maps that flip everything upside down, putting south at the top. So instead of down under, Australia would look up over. However, in China, maps usually focus on the Pacific instead of the Atlantic. Now let's mention another map trip, the International Dateline. On most maps, it's that weird zigzag line in the Pacific Ocean. Cross it one way, and you're in tomorrow. Cross back, and you're in yesterday. Hey, sounds simple. But maps don't show how confusing it really feels in real life, especially for places like Kiribati. It's a tiny island nation in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but its territory is spread so wide that it crosses all four hemispheres – north, south, east, and west. That's why, in 1995, they decided to move the international dateline so that the whole country could share the same calendar day. Now, what about time zones? Maps make them look like neat vertical slices, but in reality, they're all over the place. China has a bigger land area than the continental United States, but the whole country uses just one time zone. That means sunrise in one city might be at 5 a.m., while across the country, the sun doesn't come up until 10 a.m. And don't forget the Pacific Ocean. On most wall maps, it looks like just another ocean squeezed into the right side. But on a globe, you realize it's huge. It covers almost a third of the planet. Flat maps just can't show how ridiculously big that watery expanse really is. So to summarize, what have we learned? That the world map hanging in your classroom was one of the greatest optical illusions of all time. But it wasn't wrong on purpose. After all, it was made for sailors. We now have better tools and digital projections, and today, showing Earth more fairly actually matters. It changes how we see the world and each other. But if it does end up on some quiz show, you can claim with confidence that Greenland is nowhere near the size of Africa. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.